We're now going to do an example of a double integral using polar coordinates. Our problem is to find the volume of the region between the surfaces z equals square root of x squared plus y squared and z equals square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. So let's first draw a picture of this region to get an idea of what we're supposed to do. So here are the axes. Now what are these surfaces? First of all, z equals square root of x squared plus y squared. You might recognize this surface. If not, you can square both sides to get z squared equals x squared plus y squared, and that's a cone. However, since z is the positive square root of x squared plus y squared, we only get the upper half of the cone. So this is the upper half of the cone. Um, so let's draw the cone here. And this surface, well, to understand what it is, again, you can square both sides, and you'll see that you get the equation of the unit sphere. However, since z is the positive square root, we only get the upper half of the unit sphere. So that maybe looks like this. So it came out a little lopsided, but, but this is the upper half of the unit sphere. z equals the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. So the region whose volume we're supposed to find, it's above um, the cone and below the sphere. So it's like a mass of ice cream inside the ice cream cone, which fills up the cone and then sort of bulges out, with the bulge being part of a sphere. Okay. Now to find the volume, we can evaluate a double integral over d, where d um, is the shadow of the region in the xy plane. And what we have to integrate is the height of the upper boundary minus the height of the lower boundary. And then we have to integrate this with respect to area. Okay, so what we're doing is basically cutting up the region into thin rods and adding up the volume of these rods. Okay, so what is this region D? Well, what's the boundary? The boundary of D is going to be the shadow of the circle where these two surfaces intersect. So there's a circle up here where the two surfaces intersect. The shadow is going to be some circle down here in the xy plane. And that's the, this is supposed to be over this. Sorry, this, this came out a little lopsided again. Okay, anyway, the um, um, region that we're supposed to integrate over is this disk in the plane. Now the boundary of D, how do we write an equation for this circle? Well, it's where these two z values are equal. So it's x and y for which the square root of x squared plus y squared equals the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared, because that means that the two z heights are the same. So we write the equation square root of x squared plus y squared equals square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. Or a little more simply, in polar coordinates, we can write this as r equals the square root of 1 minus r squared. And we can solve for r by squaring both sides. So r squared equals 1 minus r squared. So 2r squared equals 1. So r equals 1 over the square root of 2. Of course, this equation also has the solution r equals minus 1 over the square root of 2. 
but I'm just trying to figure out the radius of this disk, so I, I'm going to take the positive solution here. So the upshot is that d equals the disk of radius 1 over the square root of 2 centered at the origin. And then what are we supposed to integrate? Well, um, so the height of the upper boundary, the upper boundary is the um, piece of the sphere here. So the height of the upper boundary is the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. And the height of the lower boundary, well, that's the height of the cone. So that's the square root of x squared plus y squared. Notice, notice by the way, that um, these two heights are equal exactly on the boundary of d. Inside d, this upper height is bigger than this lower height. Outside of d, this upper height is less than the lower height, so that would sort of give us nonsense. Volume is always positive. Right, so this is the integral we have to evaluate. Now let's write this on the next page. So the volume is the double integral over the disk of radius 1 over square root of 2, centered at the origin, I won't write that, of the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared minus the square root of x squared plus y squared dA. Now this is an integral which is very well suited to evaluating in polar coordinates. First of all, the domain, well theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Of course, theta can be any real number, but we want to cover the whole disk exactly once. So theta should just go from 0 to 2 pi. And since the radius is 1 over the square root of 2, r goes from 0 to 1 over the square root of 2. And the function that we want to integrate is the square root of 1 minus r squared minus r. And then we put r dr d theta. So this r here is the magnification factor. It's crucial to not forget this. All right, so let's integrate the inner integral first. So the first term is the square root of 1 minus r squared times r. So that looks like some constant times 1 minus r squared to the 3 halves. So let's check. So if I take the derivative of 1 minus r squared to the 3 halves, I get 3 halves times 1 minus r squared to the 1 half times minus 2r. So this is minus 3 times what I want. So the actual integral of this function is going to be minus 1 third 1 minus r squared to the 3 halves. And then minus r squared integrates to minus r cubed over 3. And I have to evaluate this at r equals 1 over the square root of 2 and r equals 0, and then integrate the result over theta. All right, now to simplify the arithmetic, let's pull out the minus 1 third. So I have minus 1 third times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 minus r squared to the 3 halves plus r cubed evaluated at r equals 1 over the square root of 2 and r equals 0 d theta. So when I do this evaluation, so when r equals 1 over the square root of 2, 1 minus r squared is a half, so I get 1 half to the 3 halves, an r cubed, well that's the cube of 1 over the square root of 2, so I have 1 over the square root of 2 cubed, and then at r equals 0, 1 minus r squared is 1, so I have minus 1, and then that's it, There's, because 0 cubed is 0. And to simplify this a little bit, notice that um, 1 half to the 3 halves plus 1 over the square root of 2 cubed, but well, 1 over the square root of 2 cubed is the same thing as 1 half to the 3 halves. So this is 2 times 1 half to the 3 halves, but then I can put the 2 in here to just write this as 1 over the square root of 2. Okay, so that means that 
what I've got here is minus one third times the integral from zero to two pi of one over the square root of two minus one d theta. Finally, I have to integrate this over theta, but it's just a constant, so I just have to multiply by the range of theta, which is two pi. So I finally get minus two pi over three times one over the square root of two minus one. Well, it's a little disturbing that we have a minus sign, but then this is also negative. So the whole thing is positive. Remember, volume is always supposed to be positive. So whenever you calculate the volume, as a reality check, make sure that you get a positive number. So to emphasize how this is positive, I can rewrite this as two pi over three times one minus one over the square root of two. So that's the final answer.